Okay, so I got the uh, solar engine 100 watt panel out. One of the new ones I just got in this for sale. And uh, I got her set up. Now I got her on a very minimalistic setup here so that I can put everything in one place and not drag out big battery banks. But what you got there is, is a $37 Walmart garden battery. So it's obviously not the type of battery you'd ultimately want to be using. Unless of course you're using this setup to do pumps and that sort of thing or very light duty in your backyard or uh, where you don't have power out in the shed or something. Okay, so this battery was fully charged. Now what's going on here is I have a very cheapo $20 Canadian tire inverter running over there. Not my 1500 watt inverter that I would normally use. And this battery about 5 or 10 minutes ago started off at about 12.6 I think it was. So you can see with this 40 watt light bulb running off the inverter we're dropping in voltage here. Okay, and uh, it's actually doing a little better than I thought. 40 watts, um, 40 watts, you know, if you have, uh, if you have a AC setup, 40 watts is one thing, but when you start supplying 40 watts with 12 volts, of course, you're, you, you have a factor of 10 on your amperage. So, you know, you're drawing pretty good amps. Um, so here's the setup, okay? The 100 watt panel comes into the MPPT charge controller, which is what I am focusing on today, and how these work and how, how these are very beneficial compared to just a, uh, a normal charge controller. Now that charge controller there does two things. It's a PWM, pulse width modulator, so it pulses a charge into your battery, which is slightly beneficial, uh, creates less sulfation, uh, it's a little bit more economical means of getting the uh, getting the joules into the battery instead of just a driven charge. But more importantly, the MPPT function, or maximum power point tracking, what that does is you have a panel like this. Now it's a 12 volt panel. However, under good sun conditions, like right now, I got a little bit of haze in the sky, but more or less good sun. You're going to be putting out about 19 volts out of this panel. Now this battery only needs oh maybe at this point 13 and a half um, volts to be charged now um, in order to truly charge it hitting it with more voltage is not necessarily going to uh, charge the battery better what it truly needs is more current an MPPT uh, charge controller if you graph your current over your voltage, your IV curve, there's always a different value depending upon the power of the sun. So in the very morning when this thing can just produce 13.5 volts because of the low levels of sun, this virtually does nothing. It allows all of the voltage and current to pass into the battery. However, later in the day when you have good strong sun and this thing's putting out 19 volts, 20 volts, it's an entirely different story because what it's going to do is maximize that curve. It's going to deliver 13 and a half volts. It's going to do uh, a digital version of step down transformation and you're going to end up with more current. So let's say I have a little quick look at, at, at how that works. Now, you got to understand this thing pulses faster than my little analog meter can keep up with. But remember, the maximum rating on this panel is essentially uh, 5 amps delivered to, you know, 5.85, I believe, uh, delivered to a battery. So let's have a look at what happens when, when we use the, the maximum point. can now see I've got an inline ammeter and we're running right at about four amps right now and with the sky a little hazy and later in the afternoon that's pretty darn good okay so now now we're charging this battery while we're using this battery 
Okay, and you can see we jumped up about 0.3 or 0.4 of a volt. All right, now let's see what happens when we shut off the lamp. And we shut off the inverter. And then the sun goes behind a bit of a cloud. But you can see now, potential in our battery is quite up. And we're doing a full blown charge. The other neat thing about these these MPPTs, this particular brand solar engine, they have, if you look at that, they have a load setting. Okay, so you can directly run loads. You can hook your inverter directly to this unit as long as you don't exceed. Now this is a 10 amp unit. This is a 5 amp panel. If you're going to run two panels, I recommend that you step up for a few dollars to the 15 amp unit okay so that's that's your basic setup okay and for sake of not dragging out two big six volts uh, a 1500 watt inverter I just wanted to do a minimalistic setup okay so this is you could think of this as, as my garden shed setup or as my pond setup or um, my canopy setup sliding truck camper setup just when you want some extra power or some power remote where you're not, not normally going to take it. And you can see right away, we're now back up to, to that point. So with that 200 watt modified sine wave inverter, um, for 20 bucks, I think I paid for that thing, you know, you're not going to do a whole lot with that. Okay. Uh, when it comes to induction motors and such, the best way to go is pure, pure sign. I don't offer pure sign at this point in time and I recommend Samlex out of Maine Electronics in Vancouver is a good a really good way to go but um, that's your that's your basic setup you know and uh, I think it's really important to note that the cost a lot of people look at this and go oh well I just need a basic charge controller I don't need that well I can tell you that you do want it okay and the reason is is right now that panel is under voltage if I was to take the potential off of it okay it's probably not maximum potential for one thing it's not pointing directly at the Sun secondly the Sun's slightly behind the clouds now it's rated 5.85 absolute theoretical max and here we are in a situation where we don't have an absolute max and then now you can see the battery's already charged and it's pulsing now. Okay. It's gone into PWM mode. And you can see that it delivers. It really does deliver. In in bright sunlight, when you reach over that 13 and a half, okay, you're looking at nearly 10 to 30 percent increase out of your panels add to that a solar tracking system another 10 to 30 percent so you can take a panel like that and on a good Sunday by making sure that it's always pointed directly at the Sun and by pulse charging at your maximum power point you can increase the power that comes out of that panel on average by at least 40 percent and up to 60 percent in a good on a good Sunday Okay, so thank you for taking a view of this. Just to recap uh, uh, the pricing, my price on the panel is $319 plus HST. And my well, my current promotion right now on these MPPTs, on the 10 amp, which is designed for one panel, I'm selling those for $45, bucks, okay, which is a really good deal. My cost is $38 and I pay shipping to me. Okay, so at that price you know I am not making money but I like to see people get into a into a charge controller that really does their panel justice it's a great panel it has crazed tempered glass so there's never any hot spots it has um, 10 at 90 percent power output and 20 years at 80 percent power output seven day unconditional guarantee okay you you take it home you plug it in you hook it up you decide if it's right for you if it's not you get entirely your whole money refunded no questions asked as long as it's brought back in the proper packaging and the packaging isn't destroyed as long as there's nothing wrong with it at that point you haven't damaged it I will just take it back and I'm not sure that you'll be you'll be happy with this panel a lot of people argue monocrystalline is so much better than polycrystalline 
Okay, I'll tell you what. You get your charge controller right there, maximum power point tracking. You get a monocrystalline or polycrystalline paddle, and you're going to be happy. All right, at this price per watt, at three dollars and nineteen cents per watt, you'd be far better off for three nineteen to buy a solar panel that puts out a hundred watts than to say possibly uh, say, well, I want a monocrystalline panel, so I'm going to get an eighty watt one because it's the same price. Twenty watts is twenty watts. MPPT is better than direct solar charging. Okay, so there you have it. Thanks a lot.